human brain uh, is a magnificent thing, right? It can think, learn, and adapt, and it can do all of this almost subconsciously, right? Now, many centuries ago, right, people used to do mechanical tasks, like, like lifting or moving heavy objects, right? Uh, pyramids, for example, were built this way. And then people started thinking, now what if we get a machine to do these tasks? Right? What if we get a machine to lift and move things so that, that it's, it's faster, it's, it's easier, and it's definitely more efficient? Right? So then people designed these machines uh, to lift and move things, and things started getting more efficient. And then people started thinking, what if we get a machine to think like a human? Right? What if we get a machine to, to be smart and take intelligent decisions? Right? Now that is what artificial intelligence is all about. Artificial intelligence is the process of, of creating machines that can perform tasks that require human intelligence. Right? Some of the examples would include visually recognizing objects, um, understanding speech, uh, writing, uh, making decisions in real time, and, and many more things. Right? And when we talk about the ability to learn, right, a lot of the research in artificial intelligence is focused on, on creating learning models so that they can emulate the learning process of the human brain. Human brain is the best form of AI, right? Artificial intelligence uh, is, is basically based on how can we create learning models that can emulate the learning process of the human brain. Now, people use things like neural networks and deep learning to, to model these things. Now, now, my field of expertise is artificial intelligence, and one of the most important questions I ask myself every day is, how do I make the machines as smart as the human brain? Right? <clears throat> now, artificial intelligence has, has found itself in a wide variety of verticals. Right? People use them for search engines, uh, drones, uh, self-driving cars, robotics, and, and you name it. Also, artificial intelligence is, is used for more superfluous applications, right? So, so some examples would include how do we automatically put a funny mustache on somebody's face? Or, or maybe uh, how do I display the right ad about an expensive designer brand on somebody's smartphone? So basically, uh, the discussion has been limited to first world problems. Right? People in the developing parts of the world are facing a very different set of problems, right? food shortage, like water is leaking, the infrastructure is collapsing, uh, there's no power, right? All these things directly result in the loss of human life. So uh, getting the right ad about an expensive clothing brand on the smartphone is not at the top of the priority list, right? What they're thinking is, hey, how do I get water for me and my family so that you know, we don't die, right? These are the kind of problems they're facing, and artificial intelligence can solve these problems very effectively. Right. Now, why do we care about it now? Right. Because the problems, right? These are not new problems. Water short, water leakage, uh, food shortage. That's been, it's, they've been. These problems have been around for a while. So, what? Why do we care about it now? The reason is this: this trifecta, right? The ecological debt, um, the emergence of low-cost hardware, and artificial intelligence is mainstream, which means it's not just research anymore. Now, what does it mean? <clears throat> Ecological debt is something, something we take from the environment and we don't give it back, right? Around 84% of the population lives in, in the developing parts of the world, right? And the speed, the rate at which we're consuming Earth's natural resources, only 27% of the population can be supported by it, right? And, and it's getting worse every year. And, and this ecological debt happens due to a variety of reasons. Right? It's, it's due to pollution, it's due to deforestation, it's due to population explosion. Right? So, and if you, put, if you put a dollar value on the ecological debt, it ranges in trillions of dollars every year, and it's getting worse. Right? So the, the time to act is now. Now, even if you want to do something about it, right, how do we do it? Because any solution would mean you have to actually deploy a whole bunch of hardware out in the field to make sure that, hey, the pollution is controlled, the leakage is controlled, you know, uh, we are more efficient with power. So to do that, we need something called Internet of Things. Now what this means is, like if you go back like 25 years ago, uh, 
the hardware, basically the computers, right? Computers, uh, processors, intelligence, it was very expensive, right? People couldn't have ima imagined uh, deploying like millions and millions of, say for example, sensors in the field because it's very expensive to build them. But now, the cost of hardware has decreased a lot, right, over the last couple of decades. So now, we are in a position to deploy sensors that can measure temperature, pressure, vibration, uh, water flow, soil moisture across the fields and, and get that data remotely. So which means these sensors are connected to the internet wirelessly, which means you don't need a human to go and sit in the, in the industrial plant or the field to look at the little readings. So this ecosystem of devices, the sensors and actuators that are connected to the internet is, called, is collectively called Internet of Things. Now, <clears throat> There's a very famous saying that goes, if you cannot measure something, you cannot improve it. Now, one of the biggest problems was that we weren't, we weren't able to measure the, the leakage or, or the wastage. So with, with Internet of Things, we can now measure. And with artificial intelligence algorithms, we can now improve. The algorithms consume data. The sensors are sending this data in real time. And then they learn from it. And then they take smart decisions, so measure and improve. So how do we implement a working solution? Because when we talk about artificial intelligence or Internet of Things, we need to understand that uh, it, it's, it's a fairly complicated deployment technology. Right? It, it looks good in theory. So, we need to, so there are three steps. One thing is we need to be smart about how we collect data. And when I say smart, it means that, uh, let's say there's like miles and miles of pipes, right? Some pipes are like 100 miles from your office. And you install a sensor to measure water flow. So now, in order to get the reading, if you have to send a human every single time, right? It's, uh, he, maybe he'll go there once a month or once in two months, which means you won't know what's happening between, between those two months. And if you, if you want to get the reading every single hour, right, you have to hire like hundreds of people just, to, just for a single sensor. Highly, like, very, it's not feasible at all. So you need to be smart about how you collect data. You need to build intelligent systems that can consume this data and, and, and automate the whole process. These, these systems um, learn how data behaves and then take decisions. And then dynamic resource allocation is about in the end, we are doing all this for people, right? So we need to figure out how to make machines work with people because we want to we wanna implement these systems in a way that makes our lives easier. All right, let's take an example. <clears throat> now, let's consider an agricultural field with an irrigation system installed. And there are a bunch of internet-connected sensors that, that, that can measure like, temperature, uh, soil moisture, water flow, right? And now, if that data goes to a backend with artificial intelligence, the algorithms can predict, for example, a bad event, and then send a signal to an actuator that takes automatic action. Maybe it switches something on or off. So sensor sends the data to the backend. Artificial intelligence takes the decision, sends the signal to the actuator, and it switches something on or off. So it's about completing the loop without uh, depending on a human. Right? This is very efficient if there's no human in the loop. And you, using this, you can do many, achieve many good things, like you can maximize crop yields, minimize investments, uh, avoid expensive operations and maintenance. So th uh, this is a simple example of how Internet of Things and artificial intelligence work together to create a very efficient solution to a very big problem. <laughs> At the same time, we need to understand the constraints of the developing world, right? Which means that we cannot expect them to, hey, why don't you spend like hundreds of billions of dollars and, and, and do this stuff? They don't have that kind of budget. Especially this, this problem becomes worse because they have a huge population. Right? Around 84% of the people live in the developing regions. So now limited budget with a huge population and they lack the resources to build um, sophisticated infra infrastructure. And I say resources, it means they lack Human, human capital. They lack uh, expertise, like financial backing. So all these things work together and prevent, uh, prevent them from implementing a sophisticated solution. So because of this, they end up relying on human intuition. Right? Natural resources 
are too critical. It's very critical for our survival. So we cannot afford to waste anything because of you know, human guesswork. And if there's no data-driven approach or if there's no algorithms, what people do is they'll say, hey, I'm a human and I'm going to guess when to switch off an actuator. And at best, it'll be horribly suboptimal. At worst, it'll be completely wrong. And policy making should be based on data and not on, on human guesswork. Now, when we, when we see people talk about this stuff, we listen, maybe we'll feel sorry for a minute, and then we'll go back and we'll continue doing things in exactly the same way that we've been doing them for years. Right? We don't care about it because it doesn't affect our status quo. Right? It, if it doesn't affect me, why should I care? Right? Now, people in the developing parts of the world are facing, are fighting every day for, for their basic needs, like food and water. So we cannot expect them to go out and build sophisticated artificial intelligence algorithms and then implement that using, using Internet of Things architecture. Right? It's just not going to happen. We here are, we are privileged enough to understand the nature and scale of this problem, right? We can create intelligent machines that can solve these problems. So artificial intelligence has all the answers. So it's up to us to just look at it the right way and, and make it solve meaningful problems.